This video will introduce the Clinical Excellence Commission's Comprehensive Care Minimising Harm Model to keep older people safe in our care. The presenter is Lorraine Lovett, Senior Improvement Lead in the Older Persons Patient Safety Team at the Clinical Excellence Commission. The Comprehensive Care Minimising Harm Model provides a framework for the safe care of older people. We have increasing numbers of people over the age of 65 being admitted to our hospitals with chronic medical conditions and as they get older may be deconditioned. This means that they may be slow, have poor mobility, confused and require good clinical care. It aligns with the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare National Safety and Quality Health Service Standards. Comprehensive care and partnering with consumers are two of these standards. The comprehensive care standard integrates patient care processes to identify patient needs and prevent harm. It includes actions related to falls, pressure injuries, nutrition, mental health, cognitive impairment and end of life care. The Partnering with Consumers standard recognises the importance of involving patients in their own care and providing clear communication to patients and families. Mr Long is 82 and has been admitted to the ED with acute stomach pain. A neighbour noticed that he appeared unwell when she visited him in that morning and called the ambulance. He lives alone and mobilises with a wheelie walker and appears confused. He is seen in ED where tests and investigations have begun and is then admitted to a ward. The CEC Comprehensive Care Minimising Harm Model provides components to be considered when planning care needs of patients. Mr Long is now in your care, so when we look at the Comprehensive Care Framework, what do you think you may need to consider to meet his care needs? What may be important or matters to him does he have a family member to support and provide information about how he was managing at home? For example, did he have memory problems prior to this admission? Was he independent in his usual activities of daily living? He is confused. What do you think that may be contributing to this confusion? Does this mean that he may have a delirium? You note that he uses a wheelie walker to mobilise, but he is unwell. Is he safe now to mobilise on his own? Mr Long does live alone. How well was he managing with meals and fluid intake? Has he lost weight recently? Will Mr Long require some assistance with his personal care and especially with support to meet his toileting needs? At what stage do you think that he may need to have medications reviewed? And at some point in, his, in this admission, it may be relevant to inquire as to whether Mr Long has an advanced care plan in place or what are his expressed wishes at the end of his life. The building blocks for a safe ward include safety huddles, post-fall huddles, clinical handover and intentional rounding. And these are processes during the day and night that are important to ensure that relevant information for patients is communicated and care provided. Data intelligence is to review and analyse your incident data, for example, of fall or a pressure injury at ward level, and look for opportunities to improve care. The comprehensive care minimising harm model may help guide you in this process. The model does provide some examples of clinical issues to be considered when planning care for your patients. Our role as the older person's patient safety team is to provide support to staff to implement the Comprehensive Care Minimising Harm Model. We know that serious harm events in hospitals such as falls and pressure injuries will be reduced when patients are involved in their care and their immediate care needs, for example toileting, are being met and the components of the model are being addressed. Resources are available on the Clinical Excellence Commission website to support the elements of the model.